Hello, my name is Todd Dust, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a full-fledged traffic light controller. In another video that I've shot, I did a very simple one light controller, and we're going to take that concept and we're going to expand it to cover this whole intersection. We're also going to add control for pedestrian crossing and for vehicle detect. So if you'll notice on the CY8C kit 052 board, there are buttons in the corners. And these buttons are pedestrian indicator buttons. So when I press this button, I'm telling the traffic light controller that I want to cross the street in this direction. And so what the traffic light controller should do is turn on a light when it's safe to walk, flash the light as it's becoming unsafe, and then turn off the light when I shouldn't cross because otherwise I'll get smashed by a car. And there are also these vehicle detect switches in each direction as well. So when I flip the switch towards the intersection, that means there's a car there waiting. And so what this would be useful for is if there are no other cars in any of the other intersections and this one rolls up, it makes the green light on the unoccupied intersection turn off faster so that this car can start moving right away. Now, creating this project is actually fairly complex. So what I have done is I have the project already built and I'm just going to walk you through how that project works. We're going to program it and we're going to see it working. So the first thing I have is I already have my library component, which I have called Traffic Light Controller. And if you watched my video on the simple Traffic Light Controller, you should remember this setup here of my counters and timers. So this is exactly the same as it was in that other video. The only difference now is our state machine. Whoa, our state machine got a lot bigger and more complex than it was before. If you remember previously, if we look at the simple Traffic Light Controller state machine, we had just three states. Well now, we have a lot more than three states. So really all this is is an exercise in logic to figure out how to move through all the states. So if you think about this board, there are two directions. There's what I'm going to call the north-south direction, when you either move this way or you move this way. And then there's the east-west direction, where you either move this way or you move this way across the intersection. And those two directions need to be opposite of each other. So when it's green going this way, you don't want it green going that way because your cars are going to run into each other. And you don't want all of them red all the time because then no one's ever going to move. So what I've done here in this state machine is I've set it up to have the two different lights. So the first state is red, red. So that means all four of the lights are red. And then the next state is green-red. So my north-south light will be green, and then my east-west light will be red. And then I have yellow-red, which means that this one will be yellow, and this one's still red. And then I go back to a red-red state, and then I cycle through the other side. And I still have the same timing that we used in the previous project. So you can see that there's the one-second terminal count. We also have the three seconds, and then we have the one second again. So the difference now is I've added the pedestrian crossing and I've also added the vehicle detect. So if you'll notice up here, I've added this extra state over here. So if someone has pressed the walk button, then we need to do something different. And what we're doing differently is we're turning on the walk light. If no one's pressed the button, then we're not going to turn on the walk light. So it's just like it was before. So let's go through this part. So we turn on this one, we turn on the walk light. We still control the red, green LEDs the same. But now we have a walk light, which we've turned on, which you'll notice if I open this up, I have the north-south walk light is now on, and the other one is off. And then after the three seconds have expired, we go to this yellow state here. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually inverting the state of this guy. So what that's going to do is every time there's a clock edge going into this component, it's going to make the LED turn on and off. So that will do the flashing lights on the intersection. And I have the exact same setup over here for the other crosswalk. So really, this state machine is just a mirror image across. So one side controls the east-west lights, and then the other side controls the north-south lights. And you'll notice I've also made my outputs uh, three bits wide. That's because I have more lights that I'm going to control, and you'll see that in my schematic. And I've also added the inputs for the vehicle detect and for the walk buttons. So one thing I haven't discussed yet is the vehicle detect. So where does that come into play? 
Well, you'll notice in this transition right here, if I open it up, that it transitions when either the three second timer has expired or when the one second has expired and there has been a vehicle detected. So this will make the green light much quicker so that way the other vehicle can get through the intersection. So now that I have explained this for you, we can go to a project that uses this component and we can program it into our board and see how it works. So I already have a project, so I'm going to bring it over. And here you can see the component and then I have a bus that goes out to all the different lights for the north-south and for the east-west. And then I also have my pedestrian walking lights and then I have my input. So I have my vehicle detect input, and then I also have my walk buttons. And these walk buttons are going into a set reset flip-flop. So what this allows you to do is to press the button once, and then it holds that state until it actually turns on the light to say you can cross. And you can see that the reset comes out here, comes around and goes to the reset to reset that flop. So this way it always holds the state of the pedestrian button. And then if we look at main, you'll see that I still have the uh, the command to start the count seven. I've just given it a little bit of naming this time so it's not as long. So if I go and I program this project. All right, so now the project is programmed and you can see how the lights are interacting. So one intersection goes and then the other direction goes. And you can see that it works pretty well. So now let's say that I wanna cross the street this way. So I'm gonna press the button and I have to wait until it's safe to cross. So right now it's green going this direction, so I'd get hit and killed. So we gotta wait. Okay, so now the lights are on saying I can cross. They flash, indicating it's not safe, and then they turn off telling me I shouldn't cross anymore. And we could do the same thing on the other direction. So if I click the button, right now it's not safe to cross. Okay, now it is safe to cross. Oh, hurry up, and you're done. Okay, so then the other feature we talked about was the vehicle detect. So if I flip this on, you'll notice that the green light turned off a lot quicker that time. So let's go through the whole thing. So the green light is on very quick because there's a car here and it wants to go and there's no other cars. So that makes it so this intersection is a little bit more efficient. Okay, so now we have a fully fledged traffic light controller. So you can go convince your local city government that you want to use PSOC to control the traffic lights at your favorite intersection. Uh, we'll see if that actually works. However, this project is very cool because we just completed this all in hardware. We only had to write one line of code to initialize something to get it started, but everything else was done in PSOC hardware. Your CPU is free to do whatever other tasks that you want to do. See if you can find another microcontroller that can do the same thing. This whole project is provided on our website if you would like to look at it to see more. I know that I walked through it very quickly, so you may want to actually go look at the project and play with it and see how it works. We also have a customer training workshop that turns this into a lab, and you can go through that lab to learn how to do this. Just contact your local sales representative to find out if there's a training workshop in your area anytime soon. Again, thank you for watching, and have a great day.